This is the Tom Bigby Tales, and I'm your host, Shannon Evans. I write about a small town in northeast Mississippi along the Tom Bigby River, and also about the communities along that river. Tonight's episode is titled The Murder of John Allison Hardy. John Allison Hardy was born in Rosewood Plantation on McGowan Creek in Lowndes County in 1891. <clears throat> he was married to Jeannie Morgan Steele, and they had four children, two boys and two girls. John Hardy Sr. spent his youth on Rose Hill Plantation, and after his father died and his brother Eugene inherited the plantation, John and his other siblings built their own plantation, which he called Lone Pine Plantation. It was here that he and his wife raised their children, and John's son, John Jr., who was called Jack, and his wife, Jacqueline, lived on the plantation at the time of the murder. The plantations on the prairie at that time were always busy with the growing of cotton and raising livestock, producing milk from the many dairy farms, and mostly calm after the many years of turmoil the country had experienced from the Civil War. At this time, this plantation was made up of sharecroppers. On this uh, gloomy, rainy day of February 27th, 1952, a murder occurred in which one of the most prominent citizens was shot and killed on his own farm about four miles from Columbus. Besides being one of Columbus's most respected citizens, John Allison was a hardy, and hardies were loved and considered in high esteem by both the black and the white community who lived in the area. He was not only a leading plantation owner, but John Allison Hardy was also president of the Mississippi Farm Bureau and a leader in every aspect in the state of Mississippi. Hardy apparently was notified by one of his sharecroppers about one in the morning that Lula Mae Cobb and her husband, Robert Lee, Bo Cobb, approximately age 32, were involved in an argument in Lula Mae's cabin on the Hardy plantation. Now, Rob, or Bo, as her as his wife called him, was uh, an ex-convict who had served a sentence in the state penitentiary for the murder of another African-American several years prior. Hardy dressed and then asked his son Jack to help him investigate the incident. The house of Lula May was far enough away that rain and snow was heavy on that February night, and so Hardy asked his son to get in the truck and drive behind him with the truck's lights, providing a safe walkway to the cabin where the argument was underway. It was estimated that Hardy was shot in the forehead and died at 4.30 in the morning in the Columbus Hospital without ever regaining consciousness. Lula May said Bo had shot Hardy through a small back window of the cabin. Bo was able to see Hardy as a target in the dark because of the lights of the truck driven by Hardy's son, Jack. I'll never be taken alive, Lula May quoted Cobb as saying after killing Hardy. Cobb was described by the sheriff, Charles E. Farmer of Lowndes County, as a vicious character. <clears throat> that night, the prairie was cold with snow and rain as the Hardy families slept in their warm plantation homes, not knowing that this night had turned into one of murder. Sheriff Farmer reported that John was shot and killed and assembled a hundred-man posse composed of deputies and plantation men, and they began combing the rolling hill country of the prairie for, for Robert Cobb. Roadblocks were thrown up on all highways radiating from the northeast Mississippi City. The sheriff said Cobb had shown up at Hardy's plantation Saturday night and that a disturbance developed. He said the man disappeared before law enforcement had arrived. Farmer, 
according to the Enterprise Journal newspaper of 26 February 1952, said the disturbance today had also occurred down in the sharecropper quarters. Farmer said Hardy's son, J.A. Jack Hardy Jr., told him that the argument developed at the, their cook's place involving the cook and Cobb and that other men living in the cabins nearby sent for Mr. Hardy. Farmer said Hardy and his son went to the house. He quoted the younger Hardy as saying his father was shot by the man standing inside the cook's house before a word was ever exchanged. Hardy Sr. was director of the New Orleans Federal Land Bank and was prominent in the affairs of many farm and agricultural organizations and was very respected. <clears throat> Jack Hardy would later say that he and his father had neared the cabin in the truck. They flashed their lights on the truck in the house, and then his father circled to the back of the cabin as the cook came out the front door. About that time, Jack Hardy said he heard a shot at the rear of the house, and jumping from the truck, he hurried around the house calling his father. Receiving no reply, he said he thought Mr. Hardy was just keeping quiet. Then he suddenly came upon his father on the ground. He had a bullet wound in the center of his forehead, and his pistol was still in his pocket. The man had shot him through a small back window of that small cabin. Lula May told Jack, that Cobb shot Mr. Hardy. <clears throat> Cobb had been given, giving the officers trouble in recent months since his return to the area. The sheriff said that the African-Americans here considered him mean. He had been tried but not convicted for the murder of another black man some years ago. And last and the last year prior to this murder, he had served a sentence for slashing his common-law wife with a knife, contradicting what was in the Enterprise Journal. Quote, he caused some trouble on the plantation about a week ago, and Mr. Hardy called the office of the sheriff, but he disappeared before the officers arrived. <clears throat> the next morning, a large posse was assembled. The sheriff could not assemble it the night before because it was too late with rain and snow to start a manhunt. <clears throat> While he waited, the sheriff spread the alarm throughout northeast Mississippi and told the large posse that had gathered to go home and return to the plantation the next morning. That next morning, that posse of law enforcement personnel from all around the area, including hardy family members and friends and neighbors, began to gather in the very cold, rainy dawn on the prairie at the Hardy Plantation. Mr. Hardy, Mrs. Hardy issued a personal appeal to the posse leaders not to shoot the man who had killed her husband, except in self-defense. The Mississippi Highway Patrol put 38 patrol cars into the manhunt, blocking off all roads within a 50-mile radius. Automobiles, buses, and even trains were stopped and searched. Radio stations broadcast urgent appeals for more men to join the posse. Those assembled were deputized to hunt Cobb. Other Columbus County, Columbus and county citizens joined the hunt under the authority of Mississippi at the time, which authorized any citizen to arrest any person wanted for a felony. The posse men blocked off an area of several square miles and began to comb it. For more than five hours, the posse failed to uncover a lead. Then about 1 p.m., a group of 50 men noticed smoke coming from an abandoned building on, a, on an old farm. They found a fresh fire. The pace of the hunt quickened as the posse began a thorough search of the area around the building. About a mile from the abandoned building, the posse saw a figure move across a field from a clump of bushes about a quarter of a mile away. It was Cobb. Sheriff Farmer said Cobb refused warnings to surrender. He then said Cobb fired four shots. The 15 men with the sheriff opened fire and Cobb staggered a few feet and fell dead. Cobb was wearing overalls and a blue denim shirt ripped to shreds in his flight. The bottoms of his feet were cut and bruised. Bo Hardy was a hard man. 
said, <clears throat> said Mrs. Jacqueline Hardy, the wife of Jack Hardy, the son of the planter. He had little mercy and apparently did not wish to conform in any manner to the pattern of society. He was offered his chance to live this morning when the, when the search was first started. The funeral was held at 2 p.m. several days later at the Bethel Prairie Church, where Mr. Allison Hardy was an elder and where his family and friends had worshipped for many generations. John Allison Hardy is buried at Friendship Cemetery in Columbus, Mississippi. I want to thank you for coming on my little tour of Lowndes County and, and following the Tom Bigby Tales. I hope you'll like, follow, and subscribe to my podcast.